All right, if you're interested in antennas, uh, this is one of the oldest and, uh, and uh, most known books on uh, antennas. This is a really old one, uh, the ARRL Antenna Book. This is the oldie and goodie. I uh, bought this one at a swap meet uh, a couple of years ago because I had one, you know, 30 years ago and it's gone. So I bought this one for 50 cents or something at a swap meet. Um, so in the book, there's all, I mean, the book is like full of antenna theories and how you match things and Smith charts and radiation patterns, all that stuff. Anyway, the antenna that I'm interested in is, uh, I kind of described this in one of my other videos. Um, and uh, these are these weird conical antennas. And in particular, this one here, um, I saw this one I was, when I was a kid and felt, was fascinated with it for some reason, uh, the disc cone antenna. And it gives some uh, lengths and measurements and diameters and things that you're supposed to build this to. Um, but uh, I completely ignored that and just built one <laughs> to see to see what would happen. Um, so the theory is that, you know, you feed this thing with uh, 50 ohms and uh, the center conductor goes to a hat and then the outer conductor goes to this cone. And then there is uh, some distance between the hat and the cone where your wavelength of interest will fit. And so this thing will work with short wavelengths and work with long wavelengths as long as it fits the, d the dimensions of this thing. And uh, you see a lot of antennas like this. If you go aboard Navy ships, uh, you'll see some, some things that look like this. A lot of times they have, uh, have wire hats on them and the whole thing's made out of wire. Um, sometimes they're solid like this. Um, and um, yeah, so anything else in this book about those? I think that might be the only two pages, yeah. So, th so these things. So, so just go to antenna. So let's build one and measure it. Uh, well, I did that, <laughs> so uh, this is my disco antenna. So uh, it's made out of a paper cone with uh, aluminum foil on it. And there's a coax that runs up in there. And then the, the shield of the coax connects to the, uh, to the aluminum foil. And then the center conductor goes to this copper hat, right? So it's a piece of a cardboard with uh, with uh, copper tape on it. So I'm gonna get it straight. Uh, it's straight enough. Um, and it's soldered. It's soldered on. So I'm just gonna have it sitting there, up in space. So the theory of these, like I said, is uh, short wavelengths, long wavelengths. Something will fit somewhere. And so let's uh, let's go down and take a look at the analyzer. I will shift camera positions. Uh, so there we go. Uh, this is return loss in yellow and Smith charge in green. You can see that it's zip around the 50 ohm mark there. And uh, uh, the marker here is at uh, a minus 20 dB return loss, which is the SWR of like 1.2. And so, you know, everything is working really good from this frequency about here all the way to the end. So where does it start? Well, it crosses a uh, crosses the 10 dB point at uh, 500 megahertz. So from 500 megahertz to 1000 megahertz, this antenna works fine. Um, so really, really cool uh, broadband antenna, disc cone. Uh, they were popular uh, as a product for scanners. Uh, so scanners uh, can use a really, really wide band antenna. So if you want to receive, uh, supposedly this is a good antenna. Antenna, receiver antennas is always a big mystery to me. There's cross section, is it better to have a long wire? Is it good to have a tuned antenna? There's a whole bunch of uh, folklore about uh, receive antennas, as there is with, with uh, oops, as there is with um, transmit antennas. But yeah, there's my, uh, there's my copper there and my aluminum foil, which is actually, there's copper at the very top so I could solder to it. Um, and yeah, there we go. Look at that. It's a beauty.